Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling one of the most frustrating issues while using GameHub, game crashes. If you have spent time downloading your favorite game only to click play, sit staring at the loading screen and then have it crash instantly without any air, you know how annoying this can be. Today, we are going to address some of these issues along with some basic optimizations you can do for high-end and lower-end devices. Back in September, I posted a video showing one fix that solved crashes for a lot of people. I will leave a link at the top of this video. You decided to take a chance and see what happens if you follow this video. You go to steamdb.info, you search for your game, you click on depots hoping to see what components to install, and there is nothing. No list of items, no hints, just nothing. You took a chance, and you are no closer to launching your game. This is the first issue we are going to address. The first thing you want to make sure of is that you've installed the basic components for your game. These are the foundation that will fix 90 to 95% of crashes. Without them, GameHub just doesn't run smoothly. Think of it like a missing puzzle piece. You can't complete the picture without it. Go to the three dots next to the play button, click the PC game settings and go to the components tab. I have listed the basic components on the screen for you to install and get your game up and running. Just a side note, if you see DirectX 2010 listed under your game required components, and then you go to GameHub and you search for this component only to find out that it's not there, do not panic. This little piece of information tells us where to start with your optimizations. GameHub will emulate DirectX 10 for us, so we don't need to worry about this. Once those components are installed, we can now test the game to see if it will launch. You can now see I'm able to launch into the game. So at this point, we move on to the next step. The next step is optimizing your settings. Graphics issues and crashes often come down to mismatched configurations. By tweaking a few options, you can optimize performance and get the best out of your game. Now head back into the game settings and click on the compatibility tab. This is where we are going to make most of our optimizations. Leave the compatibility layer to default. I only change this when a game is having a lot of issues launching. For the translation params, I like to use Extreme to start, and if the game crashes while I'm playing it, I will move this down till it stops crashing. If after moving it all the way down, a game still crashes, it might need a custom preset, and that is outside the scope of this basics video. Now here's where things get specific. Knowing which GPU your device has makes a huge difference. If you do not know what GPU your device has, use this website to find out. Now, for the most part, if your device has an Adreno GPU, you will want to use the newest turnip driver listed. 
However, if you do not have a turnip driver in your list, the Qualcomm drivers are the next best use. Use the highest number available. If you have a device where no turnip or Qualcomm drivers are listed, you will have to use the system driver. Adreno GPUs can handle higher performance settings better, so you can push them further without risking crashes. There are three DXVK versions that perform the best on Adreno GPUs. I have listed them on the screen. This is the component that will translate the game's DirectX 9, 10, or 11 instructions. You can try a higher version, but as of right now, they are known to have worse performance than the three I have listed on the screen. I usually start with DXVK 1.10.3. If you're running a Mali GPU, you'll want to use settings that prioritize compatibility over performance. You must use the system driver for your GPU driver if you have a Mali device. The versions of DXVK most compatible with your device are different from Adreno. Use the versions listed on the screen. I would start with the top one on the list and move my way down. Unfortunately, because I have an Adreno device, I cannot show you some of the versions that are available. Another big tip, which everyone should use, is always use the newest FEX Core and Proton 10 ARM compatibility layers. These updates are designed to reduce crashes and improve overall stability. If you're not on the latest versions, you're missing out on fixes that could save you hours of frustration. Now after these optimizations, let's test our game again. Even though you spent all this time optimizing for your game, there are still some issues that can happen before we can say we have done everything we can. If you are getting graphical glitches like I am right now, you will need to change the DXVK version to another optimized version I listed earlier. If you've watched the video this far, here are a few bonus fixes for common issues you might be having. If you are getting a black screen with music or game sounds in the background, this most likely is your graphics driver, and you will need to make sure you're using the proper driver. If you are only able to play the game for a few minutes, or a crash happens at the in-game menu, this means that you need to change your translation params to a lower setting until it stops crashing. Alright, so here's the breakthrough. I finally solved my graphics issue by switching the DXVK version. That one change stabilized my performance. And that is exactly the kind of tweak you need to be ready to do if you want to emulate your games. It's not just plug and play. Sometimes you need to swap compatibility layers, adjust presets, or fine tune GPU settings. That's the reality of emulation. Small changes can make a huge difference in whether your game runs smoothly or crashes out. So to recap, install core components, optimize your settings, adjust for your own GPU type, and make sure you're running the latest compatibility layers. With these steps, you'll solve most of GameHub's crashing problems. If you found this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more fixes, and let me know in the comments what worked for you.